Hello, everybody, and welcome to the SIG Windows Maintainers Talk. Um, let's get started. First, we're going to introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Mark Rossetti. I am the co-chair of SIG Windows. Um, I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. And I'm... All right. Uh, and I'm James Servant. I'm uh, the tech lead for SIG Windows and uh, contributor to CAPZ and Cluster API. And um, you can find me on Twitter at Aspen Wilder. I can make fire in six different ways uh, with just sticks and stones, so you can ask me about that later. And uh, happy to be here. My name is Amin Kinabe. I am the TKG uh, tech lead for Tanzu uh, and contributor for SIG Windows Upstream. seems to be working. Hello? Oh, okay. Uh, so here's uh, some updates. We're going to just do some project updates, um, demo a little bit of the work that's going to be coming, um, do some, share some additional resources, and then open up for q and I can start. Um, so first, I'll just give a little bit of an overview of the enhancements that SIG Windows is working on. Um, the first one is the, the OS field and the pod spec. That one recently graduated um, in the last release to stable. Uh, next is host process containers. Um, we actually had a whole talk about using host process containers earlier in the conference, and I encourage everybody to check that out. Um, new one is uh, host network support for Windows containers. We're targeting alpha in Kubernetes 126 for this release. Um, then there's node service log viewer. We've got a demo of that coming. That will be hopefully going alpha in 126 as well. Um, we've been working with Signode a lot to uh, have parity with our CRI-based uh, stats support, so it works on Windows and Linux. And um, next is operational readiness. We can go into some of these. Um, so this is a little bit of information about the PodOS field. This field was, um, I think, added in 122, but it's stable in 125 right now. Um, so for people who aren't familiar with this, you can specify the OS that the pod is intended to run on directly in the pod spec. And this gives a number of uh, different benefits. Um, some member, or some core components of Kubernetes, like the Kubelet, have been enlightened to um, honor this field. Um, the scheduler still isn't, but um, what this allows you to do is it allows you to, uh, we added a lot more checks into different components to make sure that you know, the container image that you're pulling is targeting the right OS and return a much richer uh, error around that. The other really important thing that I'll highlight is um, this is tightly integrated with the new pod security admission. So uh, a lot of the fields that are restrict, like that you can't set in the restricted policy are, um, there's a lot of rules about what fields you must drop or set, um, and those don't always apply to Windows. So this was a nice solution. Um, so if you're, say your pod is running on Windows, we will uh, you know, allow you to run restricted pods without you know, dropping all Linux capabilities, which doesn't make sense. Uh, so. Uh, next is, uh, we're going to do an update on host process containers. We are uh, going stable in this release, 1.26. Um, there is a little bit of new functionality that will require Containerd 1.7, um, but everything is fully backwards compatible with the old implementations. Um, one of the big highlights and one of the big reasons why we were waiting so long to go to stable is now um, the volume mount behavior is much more kind of as expected with containers. And a big plus is we can do, uh, you can use all the in-cluster clients and configs. Um, another thing I'll call out is we now have a very thin base, or a slim base image that you can use to build these host process containers on. It's about 25 kilobytes, uh, which for people who are running, used to running Windows containers is extremely small. Um, and we've got demos of all of this at, in, in the other video. Um, there's a link to the cap and more information and a link to the other talk right there as well. Let me hand it over to James. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think I'm good. Oh. Uh, yeah, so uh, with the host process container support, we've seen it adopted very heavily across the community. Uh, and the Windows Node Exporter is one of the ones that we've seen it used very heavily. Um, this, there was an open issue in uh, Windows Exporter for about three years to add support here. 
Uh, the Windows exporter typically had to run on the node, which meant you had to log in and install it. Uh, it was hard to update, hard to manage, hard to uh, ma do, figure out if anything went wrong. Uh, and so we've added support to enable that as a daemon set. Uh, and you can also use it with uh, any of the Prometheus uh, components out there. Uh, in particular, the Prometheus operator has support for it. Uh, and uh, you get some really nice graphs um, if you use the Prometheus operator out there, uh, which has integrated support. Um, the uh, really interesting thing is uh, we released this just recently, and we have over 100,000 downloads already. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, this is a very top, top ask for our customers. Uh, another one is um, the Windows Container uh, Networking Stack Inspector. Um, this uh, is a tool that's built with host process containers as well by the networking team, uh, and it lets you track the packets that um, uh, are, are flowing on the node. And you can narrow that down to an individual pod, so you can debug any of these problems that are happening. Um, there's a whole set of things that you can trace with it, uh, from the packets all the way down to um, the HNS state. And uh, it's using Packetmon under the hood on the node, uh, and then you can convert those Packetmon into uh, Wireshark format so that you can kind of analyze what's going on uh, with your traffic. So really cool tool. We did a demo of this at our previous talk, uh, so you should go check that out as well. Uh, in, in this uh, update period, we've also um, have seen a lot uh, higher adoption across uh, the ecosystem with Windows containers. Uh, and with that higher adoption, we've found a few bugs. Um, and one of those was in QProxy. Uh, and you can see the, the time uh, stats uh, here and, and how much it has improved, um, and it's particularly for Windows Server 2022. Uh, but what was happening was uh, it was very expensive to make these calls into the OS to update the proxy rules uh, that redirected the traffic. And um, with uh, some changes to QProxy, which we cache a bunch of that information, and a few changes to the OS, um, you can uh, get these sync times really low. Uh, and so what was happening was the QProxy would... Um, uh, a new node would join the cluster, and if you had a huge amount of services across that, that system, uh, it would take a while to, um, to sync those. And, and now with Windows Server 2022, we're, we're down to less than a minute to sync large amounts of services. Um, another thing that we worked on inside this uh, semester was uh, Perf Dashboard. Um, the, uh, we, we, using the Windows exporter that we talked about before, uh, we uh, enable us to run uh, performance uh, uh, tests against the Windows cluster, and we, so we can monitor this for any regressions in performance across um, the uh, uh, across the changes that we make. Um, uh, so we're tracking things like memory usage, CPU, um, network changes, uh, and Next up, we're planning on doing some work with larger scale tests, um, as well as um, uh, doing some soak testing to catch any bugs that happen on, on, the, on the VMs long term. Uh, we did do this work with um, the perf dash. So this is a public URL. I put the link down at the bottom. You can go view this. There's a bunch of other information out there for the Linux side of things. Um, but this, this is a great step forward for Windows in, in our perf uh, story. So um, next up, we're going to uh, hand it over to Avarinth, who uh, wasn't able to make it uh, with us today, but he's been working really uh, uh, in depth with the, the Node team to deliver a feature that we believe is going to enable Windows users to debug uh, problems with their Windows uh, clusters in a much easier way. So we're going to play a little video here, and uh, he'll explain it all. Hey folks, my name is Aravind and I'm a staff engineer at Red Hat in the OpenShift organization. I'm also the lead for Windows containers at Red Hat. I'm here to give you a talk about a new feature called Node Log Viewer that we are hoping to introduce as alpha in Kubernetes 126. Before we delve into the feature, uh, let's talk about the problem the feature is addressing. And it has to do with debugging services that run on either Linux or Windows nodes. 
So what usually happens is if a service on a node is malfunctioning or acting up, the cluster admin has to SSH or RDB into the node to debug it. And then they have to sort of rinse, repeat, and log into all their nodes to figure out what's going on and solve the problem that way. This is not the greatest user experience that we can provide for cluster admins in this area. And that is what we are trying to tackle here. So for the solution, what we decided was to add the capability to kubectl to view node service logs, similarly to the way it can view pod logs. This puts the cluster admin in a very comfortable place because they, they use kubectl to interact with the cluster in other ways. Once we implement the feature, there would be no need for the cluster admin to use SSH or RDB to debug this class of these classes of problems. Given the sensitive nature of some of these uh, logs, we've decided to make this feature available only to cluster admins. So let's now delve into the design details. The kubelet already has a var log endpoint viewer. It's just that there's no client enable to view the data that this endpoint is returning. So what we decided to do was to supplement this with a shim that shells out to journal CTL on Linux nodes and get bin event, which is a PowerShell command on Windows that can be used to get application uh, logs for services. We would then add a node log subcommand to uh, kubectl with a query flag. This query flag implements a heuristic mechanism to return logs either from the journal CTL or from a file under var log. What this means is, say you give a input foobar to this query flag. The heuristic mechanism will figure out uh, did the QBAR, did the foobar service log to journal CTL in the case of Linux or Windows events in the case of Windows or did it just log to a plain file under var log? And it will return the appropriate um, uh, information based on this heuristic mechanism. Uh, I do want to give a huge uh, thank you and a call out to Tim Hawkins for suggesting uh, this uh, mechanism. So it's, it's thanks to him that we have this uh, feature. In the alpha phase, the feature is going to be enabled um, by a feature gate called node log viewer. And it will be restricted to Linux nodes with systemd slash journal support and Windows services that log to uh, SQL and var log and the application logs. But this would be, this would work across all Windows variants. I also want to call out that this is based on an implementation by Clayton Coleman, which he did for OpenShift 4.0. So this is a feature that is present in the OpenShift product and has been for the last few years. So what's the current status of this feature? We have a KEP, which has been sponsored by SigWindows and has been uh, accepted. The implementation is under review, and I have dropped a link to the uh, PR here. The initial release will be behind the alpha subcommand of kubectl, and as we go towards beta and GA, we will move it outside of this alpha subcommand to its own subcommand. So without further ado, let me show you a demo of this uh, feature. So what I have here is a cluster that I brought up using uh, SIG Windows DevTools. It's a simple cluster. There is a Linux control plane and a Windows worker. And let me show you some of the features of this new command that subcommand that we have added. So this is the help. Um, it gives you a brief description about the feature and the various options available. I will hit some of the, the basic options here. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can query particular nodes that you want. So for example, here, I'm going to query the Windows worker for a service called Microsoft Windows Security SPP. This actually logs to the Windows application logs. So get win event will be used behind the scenes. And as you can see, it's going to be a pretty large log. And you can also do things like, you know, just see the last 10 lines of log and so that 
you'll, you don't have to see the whole log. Um, you can also have different queries. So for example, here, what I want to do is I want to query the control plane. I want to query the container D uh, service. And I want to only look at logs that have a particular pattern, which in this case is error. So this means that I'm going to, if, for example, if the control plane spans multiple nodes, you're going to get messages from all these nodes of the container D uh, service. You can also do things like look at, you know, if you know that there's a particular file under war log that you want to look at. Uh, the query mechanism as part of this heuristics will gives you that capability also. So here I'm going to look at, okay, these are all the, the directories that are available. And then I can see what's under the kubelet directory and say, I want to look at kubelet uh, error.log. I could do that too. So in a nutshell, this is the capability that this uh, feature is um, introducing. So let's move back to the presentation now. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, cool. So Amin, do you wanna talk? So yeah, uh, we have been uh, moving forward in the sub-projects of SIG Windows as well. And the first I have in the slides are the Windows Operational Readiness, uh, where we are developing a operational conformance kind of test for Windows. So uh, it's easier now for enterprise to validate their, their Windows Kubernetes distribution. Uh, and the way it works is like, you have a uh, specification that defines a bunch of categories and tests and uh, everything that your cluster needs to pass in able to be uh, ready and operational. So check out the project. We had uh, another presentation about this two hours ago. Uh, and where we deep dive and talk more about the project. So this is evolving, this is starting, and we are looking for contributors. Uh, Kaping now supports Windows. That's a pretty cool one. Jay, uh, Dimitri, Mark, and Douglas have moved the kernel, use, uh, kernel space to the Kaping. Now is a backend for, for Kaping. Now we support uh, user space and kernel space on Kaping. Kaping, for those who know, is the next generation of Cube Proxy, and this will allow us to provide a more scal scalable uh, solution across the service proxy that Kubernetes provides. Uh, one note here is that the Windows and Linux user space are deprecated and are going to be removed on 126. So if you want to still check one of them, uh, check on the Kaping. We have migrated them for that. So uh, in the next, in the next sub project, we have the SIG Windows development tools. Uh, this has been evolving as well. So now Luther uh, uh, implemented the WSL2 support. Now we can run the project inside Windows machines. Uh, you can use like latest uh, binaries to run your entire uh, cluster locally. Uh, or you can compile with a hash as well. That's one of the, of the functionalities that was added. And we are using, we are always migrating for the latest CNI plugins, like Antria and Calico, that's what support right now. It's only a YAML you can change and you can bootstrap a cluster locally from zero with uh, the latest software and uh, leave dangerous. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what's next now. Um, so in addition to all of the work that we've just highlighted and continuing all of those caps, um, we are making progress on Hyper-V isolated containers. This has been a big ask from a lot of people for a long time here. Um, so previously with Docker Shim, there was kind of very experimental support for Hyper-V isolated containers, but there was a lot of rough edges. The biggest one being you could only run a single container per pod, which isn't really practical. Um, so. We've started to plumb through all of the necessary support for running hyper isolated containers kind of the right way in container D. Um, most of that work has merged in container 1.7, which should be releasing this year. Um, and uh, there's a, a big uh, issue with uh, kind of outlining everything there, including what's next and the state of that there too. Um, so this will, this is um, yeah, something that we're hoping people will start taking advantage of. Um, for those of you who aren't 
uh, aware of this, like Hyper-V isolated containers do provide a much better security boundary versus uh, the traditional Windows process isolated containers. And we're hoping this is gonna help people enable more work, onboarding more and more secure workloads into the cloud. Um, yeah. So. Cool, yeah, I got it, I think. Um, yeah, so uh, we just wanted to say a special thanks to uh, our contributors and, uh, and some of the new contributors. So Fabian uh, has been helping out with uh, adding test coverage and some documentation to the SIG Windows dev tools. Uh, that you can find some really interesting things there around how to use host process containers. Uh, and so, yeah, thank you. Uh, David Scott, he has been helping us uh, on the networking side. Uh, he's, he was the one that found that uh, QProxy bug and was able to help us debug it. Um, Andrew Collins, uh, he's, he's came to SIG Windows a few times and helped us with some of the perf work that they're doing over at Red Hat. Uh, and so, really appreciate the help there. Arvind, uh, for all the work that he's doing, that was a really cool feature. Um, I think one of the really good use cases for the feature that he's working on is GMSA, uh, being able to query the event logs and identify any, any problems that you're doing when you're setting that up. Uh, and Dimitri, he's helped out with the Win uh, Kernel Proxier uh, and the KP, KPNG project. And um, there's so many other people who have contributed, and so if we forgot your name, we're really sorry. Uh, but we really appreciate your work. Uh, and uh, come out and help us out. Uh, we'd love to, to help. Uh, and on that, so we'll talk about how to contribute. Um, we have a SIG Windows community page. It talks about um, all the sub-projects that we have, where you can get involved. Uh, it has links to the Slack page, um, all the uh, bug tri triage and, and meetings. Uh, we have a contributing guide. Uh, that helps you get started specifically for Windows. Uh, we have community meetings every Tuesday at 9.30 uh, Pacific. Um, and uh, we also, after that, if you come into SIG Windows and you have a problem and you wanna just kinda hack on something, uh, we do do some pairing sessions afterwards. So somebody can drop in and say, hey, I've got this problem, uh, and we'll just kinda hop in and start working on it. Uh, and so that's a really cool way to get started uh, and get your uh, questions answered. Um, some other ways you can get uh, started is um, the uh, documentation and other uh, projects that we, we've kind of mentioned throughout here. We're looking for contributors across the board there. Um, and uh, every other Thursday at 9.30, we also do bug and issue triaging. Uh, and so uh, there's a small group of us that just go through our uh, backlog and triage it and start to figure out what's going on and, and which ones we're gonna solve. So here's just a little bit more information about who some of the leadership is in SIG Windows and all the resources, like I'll link to all the YouTube recordings, meeting notes, the Zoom meeting, um, just where you can find us. I'll leave this up, but we can open it up for questions and answers. If anybody has any. Uh, one second, yeah. That way everybody can hear you on the recording. Yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, about, hi, thank you. About the host network containers, is that uh, integrated with host process containers that sit on top of host process containers? Or is it either or? Uh, no, so that's something different. Uh, host process containers are currently restricted to running in the host network namespace because they, they run on the host. Um, currently, you cannot run your like normal Windows pods and join them to the host network's namespace. That's just new, that new functionality that we're enabling for non-host host process containers as well. Got it, so it's sort of like host network without the volume mount. Exactly, and, and yeah, it's, it's host network without having everything else run in all the different cool. host namespaces. Thank you. Question. Anybody else? Question? Uh, hello. Thank you for your talk. I would ask. Uh, I would like to ask. Uh, what are the options uh, I have when I want to run a hybrid cluster uh, and using network uh, network policies regarding the CNI plugin? That is still being considered, right? Or like we're, that's this still TV. This was TVD. the primary reason not using a hybrid cluster. 
for my community organization. So we've had distinct Windows and distinct Linux cluster. Do you know, Brandon, do you want to come up? Uh, Brandon said. Sorry, could you repeat the question? <laughs> Uh, my question was, uh, what options do I have when I w want to run an, uh, 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 sorry, a network policies in a hybrid cluster regarding to the CNI plugin? Yeah. At the moment, I don't think we have a direct option for that, but that, like J Mark said, we're on, you know, it's in the works. So let's definitely talk, and we can <laughs> see what you're looking for. With the hyper-v isolated containers, the first step was being able to launch them in container D, and um, those will all be launched through like the runtime classes and all of that functionality for other, you know, Kata containers and things. Um, after that is stable, we're gonna, that's when we're gonna start looking at the rest of the Kubernetes experiences on top of that. Yeah, the first piece is just getting it to work with HCS. It is. Um, so that may come in. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I know Calico has network uh, policy oh, so support. Oh, so just to clarify, um, Per here said network policies are part of the CNI. So. Oh, yeah. Um, I know Calico has support for network policy. Uh, Azure CNI does as well. Um, I, do you know if Antria does? Yeah, Antria does as well. Yeah, Antria does as well. So. Yeah, we'll just need to experiment and see how that all ties together. Anybody else? Thank you, everybody, for coming. Oh, yeah, I missed you.